Today, we are comparing four tubular batteries with a 10 kilowatt hour lithium battery. To do this, we are looking at three things. Number one is the nominal capacity. Number two is the depth of discharge, which is DOD. And number three is the usable capacity. Welcome to my channel and happy new year to you all. I wish you all a fruitful and productive 2026. So we have four tubular batteries. One, two, three, four. Now we are looking at uh, the nominal capacity of these batteries. The nominal voltage of these batteries, each of them is 12 volts and the nominal capacity is 220 amp hours. Now these batteries are connected in series, positive, negative, positive, negative. Now they are connected in series to form a 48 volt battery bank. So if we have a 48 volt battery bank, if they are connected in series, voltage will double. So we have 12 multiplied by four. This will give us 48 volts. Then the nominal uh, capacity in amp hours is still 220 amp hours because when you connect in series, capacity will remain the same, but voltage will double. But if we connect them in parallel, it is the capacity that will increase, but the voltage will remain the same. Now, this is for the tubular batteries. Then we have the lithium battery. The nominal capacity in amp hours is 208 amp hours. And the nominal voltage is 51.2 volts. Now, they can work with any 48 volts inverter. But if you are connecting an inverter to this uh, lithium battery, you must check that it is compatible with the lithium battery in terms of the settings and the smartness of the inverter. Now let's look at the nominal energy of this battery bank and also the nominal energy of this battery bank. To know the nominal energy, we multiply the voltage, the nominal voltage by the nominal capacity in amp hours. So we have 48 volts multiplied by 220 amp hours. This will give us 10,560 watt hours. Now this is the nominal energy or 10.56 kilowatts hours. Now for this one, the nominal energy is 208 amp hours multiplied by 51.2 volts. This will give us 10,649 watt hours or 10.6 kilowatt hours. So if you look at the nominal energy, it is uh, almost the same. But we now move to the DOD. I told you we are looking at three things. The nominal energy or the nominal capacity, the uh, depth of discharge, which is DOD, and the usable capacity. Now we are looking at the uh, depth of discharge. We are done with the nominal capacity. The nominal capacity, all of them look almost the same. For the depth of discharge, for a lead acid battery bank, the recommended depth of discharge is 50%. 50% DOD. Now, when we say 50% DOD, the recommended discharge is 50% DOD. This does not mean I cannot discharge this battery uh, up to 100% percent DOD. I can completely deplete, deplete this battery. I can use the whole energy that is in this battery. But since it is a lead acid battery, it is not recommended because if I do it like that every day, it will shorten the lifespan of the battery because these are lead acid batteries. When you deeply discharge them every day, you recharge, you deeply re uh, uh, discharge, these batteries will not last long because uh, the cells you know, will die fast and the rate of degradation will be fast. Now for the lithium battery, the recommended depth of discharge for this one, for example, the day 10.6 kilowatt hour uh, lithium battery is 90% DOD. So we are now seeing the difference. So this one is 90% DOD. So this is 0 0.5 and here we have 0 0.9. Now we are done with the DOD. The next one we are looking at is the usable capacity. Now you can uh, check one of my previous video. I talked about 
nominal capacity, usable capacity, and depth of discharge. The nominal capacity is the, uh, let's say, the original rated capacity of the battery, the normal capacity of the battery from the manufacturer. Then we have the usable capacity. This depends on your depth of discharge. The depth of discharge is the recommended depth of discharge by the manufacturer. I can decide, like I told you, to use 80% here. I can discharge up to 80%. I can discharge up to 70%. I can discharge up to 100%. But it is not recommended because the battery will die fast. Here, I can also discharge up to 100%. I can use uh, uh, the whole capacity in this battery. At that point, the state of charge is 0% and the depth of discharge is 100%. So if I have 0.9 here, which is 90%, and 0.5 here, which is 50%, the usable capacity of this LED, uh, tubular battery uh, bank is, we have, uh, we multiply the nominal capacity, uh, the nominal energy, which is 10, uh, 10 <coughs> point five six kilowatts as multiplied by 0 0.5 this will give us 5.28 kilowatt hours then for this one it will be 10.6 multiplied by 0 0.9 this will give us 9.54 kilowatt hours so you can now see the difference for a lead acid battery at 50% DOD, the usable what I can use is just 5.28 kilowatt hours out of 10.5 kilowatt hours. But for the lithium battery, I can use 9.5 kilowatt hours at 90% DOD. So for me to even get these uh, up to this uh, for this lead acid uh, battery bank, I will have to add four batteries. So this will now make it eight batteries. If I connect another four in series, another four batteries in series, this is positive to negative, positive to negative. Then I'll have my, my, uh, my positive will be here, my negative will be here. Then I'll now connect in parallel. So it will now be, uh, it will now be 48 volts, then 440 amp hours if at all i want to get up to this the usable capacity of a lithium battery but even at that it is still at 50 percent dod the recommended depth of discharge so you can see that in terms of the nominal capacity they are almost the same but when it comes to the usable capacity they are not the same the lithium battery will outperform the lead acid battery so in 2026, if you are setting up a solar power system, the best battery you can go for is the lithium battery. Unless you are having a small solar system, just maybe one battery, you can use uh, the lead acid battery because of budget and uh, probably you just want to start using the solar power system and you don't have the money to set up or to purchase a lithium battery. You can start with uh, a tubular battery. But just one but if you're going for two you know you want to increase the capacity it is burst you go for the lithium battery but if you have the budget if you have the finance the best option for 2026 is lithium batteries it will outperform the lead acid batteries in terms of the usable capacity in terms of charging and discharging this comes with a bms a battery management system to manage the charging, the charging voltage, charging current, discharging uh, current, you know, temperature, and all other things that are needed to keep your battery safe during operation, during charging and discharging. This lithium battery comes with a BMS. But here, there's no BMS. There's no control system. So the lifespan of the lithium battery will, you know, be higher than the lead acid battery, which is the tubular battery that we are talking about here. You want to set up a solar system for commercial purpose, for domestic use in your house, the lithium battery will serve you better. And for this battery, this day, uh, 10.6 kilowatts hour lithium battery, you can parallel 
up to 32 pieces. And if you connect 32 pieces in parallel, what you have is up to 340 kilowatt hours. Just 32 pieces of them. Now imagine you are using a lead acid battery to, you know, get this kind of energy storage, this kind of uh, energy bank, 340 kilowatt hours. This is 340,000 watt hours. So you can imagine the number of batteries you are going to install in a room, the number of tubular batteries you are going to install. There will be a lot of inefficiencies in charging and discharging. It's going to occupy a lot of space. The weight is there. And, you know, but for the lithium battery, just 32 pieces, you already have 340 kilowatts hours. Then the efficiency is far higher and better than the lead acid battery. Thank you for watching. Once again, welcome to 2026. I wish you a fruitful new year. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. You have a lovely day.